Let's find the equation of the hyperbola with given asymptotes and that passes through a certain point. Uh, let's have the asymptotes be y equals plus or minus 2x, which passes through the point 12, 26. So we don't absolutely have to, but we probably a good idea to uh, sketch it. Oh, find the equation and sketch, let's say. I would probably always want you to do that. Um, so let's first just plot that point and sketch the asymptotes. We're going to need a scale that goes out to the 30 in y. Let's have it go out to 30 in x. And, uh, oops, okay. And there's the point. So 12 comma 26 is right here. Here's y equals plus or minus 2x. Remember, that's the only kind of line you can't sketch with the two intercept method. But just plot 0, 0, and then like 10, comma 20, and then you know, 10, comma minus 20, just it's those straight lines. So it's an x, as usual. And so one thing that tells us right away is it's going to be an up-down opening hyperbola, because 26 is just slightly bigger than 2 times 12. Okay? And we can see that the center, the, where those cross, is the origin. So that's good stuff to recognize. Center is the origin, 0, 0. So it's not shifted. And the other video is going to be about shifting uh, things like this. Or another video pretty soon. Not sifted. Hmm, okay. Not shifted. Okay. And it's an up down opening since algebraically it's because the 26 is a little bit above. It's annoying. Okay. Since 26 is a little bit above 12. Uh, 2 times 12, rather. Okay. Because if it was exactly, it would be on the asymptotes. That would be a little weird, although it's a degenerate case that's not really illegal. Um, but since it's bigger, it's going to be in this, these two quadrants, these two sections, up and down. Okay? Uh, so it's not shifted. It's up, down, opening. So we know what the format is. It's going to be y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. For a hyperbola, remember, it's a little bit of a subtle difference from an ellipse, the a is always going with the plus, because the a should always go with the, the foci and the vertices, and the b is the other direction. And the plus is always the direction that has the foci and the vertices. For an ellipse, it depends on which one is bigger. It, so a is always greater than b. But um, for a hyperbola, A does not have to be bigger than B. It just has to be the one that is with the, the plus sign here. There's an implicit plus sign that we should never actually draw. We should never, never actually write. Okay, so that's a, a subtle difference there. All right, so now we just need to figure out A and B. Well, what do we know about asymptotes? We know that the asymptotes, here's where it's really nice to have that memorized. I usually, when we're graphing it, I usually just use the box to remember things. But we do want to remember that it's always given by y equals plus or minus b over a. Ooh, or is it b over a? Hmm. Okay, it's going to be, um, it's a little bit tricky. It's either b over a or a over b. It's always going to be y equals the y value, the one associated with the y value, over the one associated with the x. x. So that's a little annoying is that um, when it's a y minus x, we want the a to mean the thing with y. And so another way to write that, of course, is um, another good way to write it is y over a uh, equals plus or minus uh, a x, no, y over b. I know y over a, there we go, uh, x over b. Okay, and so it's the same association you have here, y with a, x with b. So maybe that's an even better way to write it. So this is asymptotes for an up-down. And it's a little annoying that we have to be careful about our, our A's and B's here. Okay, so in other words, A over B is going to have to match 2. Hmm, okay, so let's write that down. We know that A over B is going to equal 2, or A equals 2B. Well, that's nice a nice equation. That's one equation for two unknowns, so that, that's not so bad. Now, what's the other piece of information we haven't used? It passes through this point. That kind of information always gets used in the same way. You just plug it in. That has nothing to do with asymptotes or boxes or anything special to hyperbolas or ellipses or whatever. That kind of information always gets used in the same way. 
it means that if I plug in 26 for y and 12 for x, this should be a true equation. That's going to give us another fact about a and b. It's going to tell us that 26 squared, which I'm not going to calculate quite yet. Oops, sorry. Uh, let me give a little space here. 26 squared over our mystery a squared minus 12 squared over our mystery b squared should be 1. Okay, two equations and two unknowns. That shouldn't be too bad. And it can be bad, actually, if they're complicated. But since a equals 2b, oh, okay, I can just put that in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that with 2b quantity squared. Now that's one equation and one unknown. It shouldn't be that bad. Okay, so let's see if we can work on that. Well, first thing, 26 squared over the 2 squared, that simplifies. That's going to be 13 squared over b squared minus 12 squared over b squared. Now, the really nice thing there is it's already a common denominator. And so we just get 13 squared minus 12 squared over b squared. This is where, if I, you broke out the calculator, I wouldn't actually hit you. Um, oh, of course, I wouldn't hit you anyway. Um, but this is a familiar combination. 13, 12. We should always be thinking about Pythagorean triples here because a lot of these problems are engineered to make the answers nice. In real life, it wouldn't be, I must admit. 13 squared minus 12 squared turns out to be 5 squared. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Or in other words, 5 squared equals b squared, or 5 equals b. Remember, b and a, by definition, are just positive, because they always really come in as their squares, because the only place, the place, they, the fundamental place they come in is up here, and we just always use the positive version. And so we're just going to say 5 equals b, and then a, remember, was 2b, and so it's going to be 10. And so our equation, that doesn't work, x squared, sorry, y squared, over 10 squared minus x squared over 5 squared equals 1. So there we've got our equation. Now to, to graph that, we've already got a lot of the graph set. Um, we've got the asymptotes. We just need the vertices. We could do the box. It's not absolutely essential because the box, the main point of the box is to get the, uh, the asymptotes. And of course the vertices are just where you set x equals 0. And so vertices are going to be where x equals 0 because it's an up-down hyperbola. And so y equals plus or minus 10. It's, it's always plus or minus a. Always, always, always equals plus or minus 10. And so the points are just 0, comma, plus or minus 10. OK, and once you've got the vertices and the asymptotes, you're pretty much ready to go. And I actually have it pre-graphed down here. Let me bring it up. There we go. So here it is through 0 plus or minus 10, still going through that, that starred point, and with these asymptotes. Okay.